sir. We love you. God bless you. Love you too. Good to see everybody tonight, Reverend Lancey. Thank you so much for your con continued faithful teaching. Um, um, this week. Thank you so much for your commitment to the Lord. It is good to see everybody. Some of y'all I hadn't seen in a few days. Um, um, I was out of town Sunday and I thank God for the, all of the ministers and all of the church leaders taking and doing that, which God wants us to do. And I'm glad to be back. I am right now at a remote location. I'm in front of the 2800 Camelton Road and um, just finished opening um, in prayer with Reverend Parker and her, um, her um, praise and worship event. And so I wanted to come here to the car. I was trying to get to the church, but I realized I might not make it. I know it's no good sales service. I parked right here in this parking lot to teach this class. Uh, we're here tonight just as a reminder um, to where we're, we're circul circling back and we're looking at the book of Acts with the idea of a call to action. We're here tonight um, in the book of Acts for the purpose of looking and evaluating, investigating so that we can apply what it takes to be an effective Christian and what it takes to be an effective part of the body of Christ to really do the work that God has called us to do. Let me say this. God didn't call us to be saved just so that we could just sit in our salvation. He called us to be saved so that we could be a part of his body, the body of Christ, so that we could share his word, share the good news of the gospel, share the promises of God, and through us that the power of God would be displayed. The power of God is displayed through every Christian by our actions, but also by God's operations in our lives. That's the truth. As Christians, how do we demonstrate the power of God? By how we live, by how we change, how we operate, and also by the great, miraculous, powerful things that God does in us. I, I, I come to understand this, that God's miraculous power is not just related to healing or or, or things that we can see, obviously. But the truth is, if we could really be honest with ourselves, God's miraculous power reveals itself, quite frankly, uh, in how we live. How many of us can look back to who we used to be and look at where we are today and realize it was nobody but God? And I want you to know, if you believe God has transformed you, others have seen God transform you from uh, uh, whoever you were, whatever that person was, into who you are today. And so a lot of times our living, our lifestyles are demonstrative of God's great power operating in our lives. And so tonight, I want to pick up a chapter 27 in the book of Acts. And I thank the Lord for guiding me in the way he did on this. Chapter 27 in the book of Acts begins the process of Paul's journey, Paul's journey to Rome. Now, this is why this is important. I'm going to try to slow down so I can contextualize it. If we remember early, Reverend Ed, was back in Paul's initial missionary journey. He really wanted to go to Rome. God wouldn't let him. He, if Even if you look at the book of Romans, Paul said, I tried to get there, but I couldn't get there. But God ultimately allows Paul to get there in due time. Now, between where we left off the other night, when Paul was in Troas and he was preaching for hours and the young man uh, fell out the window and God, by, through Paul, raised him back to brought him back to life. Uh, Paul has been arrested. Paul has been conspired against. Paul has stood trial before the Sanhedrin, before Festus, before Agrippus, before Felix. Um, he has really gone through a lot. But not at any point in time do we see Paul's faith falter or not at any point in time do we see Paul's purpose um, become uh, amiss. Paul trusted God because God had promised him. What we learned just before he went to Troas was that God had told him in Corinth, Paul in Corinth, hey, you're going to get to Rome, man. You're going to be good. And he tells, he reiterate, reiterates it again that God, that, that he need not worry because God said he's going to take him to Rome. God, multiple times during, the, during Paul's ministry, God stood by him and told him that he was going to be fine, not to worry. And despite Paul having faced the conspiracies of the Jews, despite the fact that he he's faced um, injustice and oppression, despite the fact that he has been locked up for a period of time for nothing, more than professing faith in Jesus Christ, Paul does not falter. Paul's faith does not falter and Paul's purpose does not diminish. I say that tonight because it is very easy for us in Christ to allow circumstances and situations to cause our faith to falter. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. What the why me, Lord? Why do I got to deal with this? Why am I going through this? Why do I feel the way I feel? Why is my family going through the things they're going through? Lord, why is it that this is happening to me? But what we must understand is that 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 these things happen, but God wants our faith to stand strong. I went to the bank today and the young lady said, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I said, I sure will. And she said, 
life is, isn't it? I said, life is. That's what life is. I said, but God is greater. And isn't that right? God is greater than whatever challenge we are facing. I'm, I even as even as he said that, I'm I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking to say it now. God is greater than whatever challenge we face. Life is, but God is greater. And so I, I say that to just to remind us of the reality of the power of God and reality of just us never fall, never allowing our faith to fall. To why? Because God's power is greater. Matter of fact, First John says that God the greater is He who is in us than He that is in the world. And so, because God is in us, why is He in us? Because we are His children. Uh, we are His blood bought believers. His power, His presence is in us. He's in us. And so, we have no need to worry because God's power and presence is in us. And here's the other thing: God's power and presence won't ever leave us. Now, um, Paul demonstrated this in his life, and I want us to understand that doing ministry ain't always easy. Doing the work of the Lord is not always a piece of cake. There'll be some days you're so excited about doing it, but let me be very honest with you. There'll be some times you'll be challenged about it. I don't want nobody to disconnect the line and say, I ain't doing ministry if I got to be challenged. I'm telling you that it's worth it. I'm telling you that doing the work of the Lord, whatever the work the Lord calls you to do is worth it. I want to say this one more time. If you are a Christian, God has work for you to do. I cannot stand by as pastor and say, well, not you, you're on vacation. Or not you, you don't have to do it. All of us have a specific work that God has called us to do. As we keep this in our minds, let us always understand that our faith may get weary, but don't let it fall. We may get tired, but don't let your faith fall. Let me say it like that. Don't let your faith diminish. Always say, Lord, I'm trusting you. Sometimes we got to talk to ourselves. I still remember Paul encouraged himself in the Lord. I believe Paul said, uh, Reverend Evans, while he was in Ziglag, Lord, you got to handle this, but I know you can do it. Sometimes we got to talk to ourselves in the midst of our situation so that we can understand that God is able and we can remind ourselves that God is able. Paul went through all these things. He went through all these situations. He went through all these circumstances. He went through these difficult times, again, for doing nothing. Paul wasn't locked up because he had stolen something. Paul was locked up because he declared Christ as Savior. Now, doing this, the thread throughout all this, God promised Paul, Paul, you're going to make it to Rome. And so Paul believed that he'd make it to Rome. Uh, at one point, Felix and Agrippa had this conversation that if this man didn't ask to go to the king, uh, uh, if he didn't ask to go see the um, um, the king of Rome, the emperor, he said, we'd let him go. But Paul had asked, Paul had appealed as a, as a Roman citizen um, to say that he wanted to, to, to adjudicate his case in front of the king, in front of the highest person in the land. And as, as such, he went down. I want to stop there. Sometimes you may wonder as a Christian, I wonder why did I do that? I wonder why did I answer that? And I want to tell somebody, sometimes we do what we do because the spirit of God leads us to do what we do. I've had people say, why did I Why did I um, decide to be on this ministry? Because the Lord told you to. And if the Lord told you to do it, guess what? You got to stick with it and you got to trust God in it. Paul is now, chapter 27, I'm going to open, go ahead and open your Bibles now. Chapter 27, Paul is headed to Rome. He's headed to Rome now. He has um, been through quite a bit, but now he's on his way to Rome. Why? Because that's what God meant for him to be. God meant for him to go to Rome. God had told him, I'm going to let you go to Rome. And now his, his prayer request is answered. <clears throat> I'm going to read just a few verses to get it started. Chapter 27, verse 1. Paul said these words. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius. Julius belonged to the Imperial Regiment. Ju Julius belonged to a special um, group of soldiers whose job was to transport criminals um, between the, the far-reaching uh, cities of Rome and in, in the Roman uh, capital um, in, in, in at that time. Paul says in chapter 2, we boarded the ship. We boarded the ship from Angemidium, <clears throat> about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristocrus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. Let me pause here. I think the thing that I may have mentioned this earlier, the thing about Paul was Paul was a collector of believers. I want to hear what I'm saying. He collected believers. He was always partnering. He was always connecting. He was always seeding it to other people. And I want y'all to hear this. As a result, Paul always had traveling companions who were not only willing, but also capable and able of sharing the gospel of Christ. Can I say this? Can I pastor for just a second? It is important that we are always willing to seed it to somebody else. Many, many of us, and I'm going to go ahead and talk Turkey as Christians have been so selfish with our testimony. We've been so selfish with what God has done for us. And we have quite frankly been selfish with this sharing the word of God that God has placed in us that we don't seed into anybody else. God wants us to seed. God wants us to teach. God wants us to share. 
God wants us to minister to other people. He wants us to minister to unsaved so they can become saved. And then he wants us to minister to some saved people so that they can in turn grow in Christ. If you are surrounded, now I'm going to say this, if you're surrounded by only mature Christians, guess what? Y'all just having a conference. Y'all just talking. Surround you, get some, get some, uh, get some young folk. And, and I'm playing, I'm not talking about age wise now. I'm talking about get some young believers, some people who are new in Christ. Get some people who just learned about Christ. Let that be somebody who you target to seed into. I'm always kind of um excited when I look at organizations uh, all over the world. Um, whether it be and, and, and I'll be honest with you, um, you you see organizations and you see the president is so and so, the vice president is somebody else, and the next first thing is happening. That vice president becomes president. Why? Because the president seated to him. Even if you look at athletics, you'll see football players, baseball players, basketball players have somebody who's responsible, who who takes somebody under their wing and and begins to nurture them so that they can accomplish great things themselves. My younger son, y'all may I may have mentioned this. He's a he's a congressional aide in in, in Washington D.C. on Capitol Hill, and and he's been fascinated by the number of people who have tried to to bring him along, and and in this case, give him more information on the electoral process, on the the process of of governance, and and he's excited about it. Why? Because somebody seated to him. If if that's important, if if, if NBA players nurture NBA players and congressmen uh, uh, nurturing young people, shouldn't it be just as important that the body of Christ nurtures people in Christ that we share with them? This man aristocrats we just seen him for the first time but guess what he was in macedonia how did he how did paul meet him paul picked him up in macedonia man said i want to go paul come on paul just say ain't got time for you ain't got time to be seen in you paul said come on let's do it let that, that be something that guides us in our christian walk that we look for people one of the reasons why when new people come to christ in saint peter i assigned them to somebody so they have somebody mature to express to them so they can have a conversation, communicate with somebody who is in Christ and maybe who actually has been there and done that. That's important for us as Christians. Uh, one of the things, what I think I mentioned this before, a lot of times when I when people have a transplant, so waiting on a transplant, they say, Pastor Thomas, or they, Eric, or whatever their, their nickname they have for me, they say, can you call this person? I'm able to call them and talk to them specifically about what to expect. I'm able to call it specifically to talk about how you're going to feel and what's going to happen. As Christians, we have the same qualifications to talk to believers, new believers. Why? Because we've been there. God has allowed us to be a new believer. He's allowed us to be a, a young believer. He's not us to be a mature believer. And sometimes now he's got to let us be seasoned believers. But always don't keep it to yourself. Surround yourself. Find somebody that you can minister to. The Bible says here, after um uh, in verse 3, that they they began these travels, and I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna go through the specifics. I'm gonna summarize this. Paul's on his way to Rome. That's the most important thing. Paul has demonstrated ability to see in the people. This man, Arist this man wasn't even wanted for anything. He was traveling. Um, they were trap Paul's traveling companions. Quite frankly, Luke was there as well. The next day, they went to Sidon and Julius and Candace to Paul allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. Here's another thing: when you are in a place in your life where you are doing the work of God, God will show you favor. You want to get God's favor? Do his work. Do his, Do what he wants you to do. God will give you favor when you do what he's called you to do. Paul, despite the fact he's on the way to jail, is getting favor. Why? Because he's been so diligent doing the work of God. I tell people all the time, we want to get blessings for free, but blessings come with uh, as a result of relationship. Relationship with who? God in Jesus Christ. That's what it comes to. So if you're in relationship with God, Jesus Christ, you serve him, guess what? God's going to bless you. And he's going to show you his, let you see his favor. I'm going to do a couple more verses here. The Bible says that they went in verse seven, uh, they went and made head away for many days and had difficulty arriving off Nidus. Uh, when the wind did not allow the whole our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salmon. We came along, we moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. Here's another, here's another fact about doing the work of the Lord and being engaged in ministry. And I'm telling anybody, this right here is for somebody who's on the on the border of saying, I'm going to get involved. This right here is for somebody who's engaged in ministry. Can I be honest with you? But you're a little tired. This right here is for somebody who has been engaged in ministry and been doing the work of the Lord, but you just sometimes look like you can't get it. You can't get the way you want to go fast as you want to go. The Bible says here, as Paul was on his way to Rome, and this really is a metaphor to a certain extent about Paul's journey. It's really, it's actually not even a metaphor. It's Paul's journey. On Paul's journey, Paul ran into difficulty in our lives in doing the work of the Lord. We're going to run into difficulty. And this particular difficulty was, was in that they, they couldn't seem like they couldn't get going. There was difficulty getting where they were trying to go. Paul wanted to go to Rome, even though 
it, as it turned out, Paul died in Rome. Paul wanted to go to Rome. Why? Because he wanted to have a platform to preach Jesus. Sometimes when we're trying to get where God wants us to get, we're going to have some difficulty. If, if I could really talk turkey, I'm going to go ahead. Since I'm in this pocket, I'm going to talk turkey. It's past, I've been past almost 20 years. That's some stuff I just wish it would happen. But I've got to come to learn that sometimes it's going to be a little difficult. Sometimes the wind's going to blow against you. Sometimes the wind's going to slow you down. And that's what I have to be prayerful about. God, give me the patience in those difficult moments to understand that your will is still going to be done. The reason why Paul didn't get upset, you know why Paul didn't get upset? Because God told him, you're going to make it the wrong. And so Paul says, if I got to pause here in Fair Havens for a little while, I'm all right with it because I know that God's God's work, his promise, his plan, his purpose is going to manifest itself in my life. I'm talking to myself now, be honest with you. I'm telling y'all as well, when we are doing the work of the Lord, understand that you may have headwinds, crosswinds, rip ties. That will be difficult sometimes, but know that because God promised it, it's going to come to pass. So whatever you're doing, whatever you wish, I wish I could do this right here. Keep pushing, keep going, keep sailing. And God is going to bring you to where he has promised he'd take you. And if you say, I don't know if the Lord promises, you know what you need to do? Give him a call. Give God a call. You know how you call him? P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E and ask God what is, is he's taking you or what is he has for you. God will give you clarity. I'm not saying God will tell you exactly where he's taking you. You just know what you know what you're supposed to do. Paul didn't know what route they were going to take to get to Rome, but he knew they were going to get there. And sometimes God will tell us that. Don't worry about it. I got it. And all we need to do is, is, is we're encouraged by God to keep pressing on. Somebody said, keep pressing on. I'm going to keep sailing on because I know that God is going to get me where I need to go. I'm going to hit about one more verse. I keep saying that, but I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, here, um, verse 9 says, much time had been lost. And sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was the day of atonement. So Paul warned them, men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. Um, I, that, that verse nine is interesting. Much time had been lost. Here's the thing I say about that verse. Paul, Luke wrote the book of Acts. From Luke's perspective, they had lost time. I find it fascinating, Reverend Leslie, that they were in a hurry to get to Rome well, ostensibly, Paul was going to go on trial. Ostensibly, he was going, particularly, to, and as it turned out, to die in Rome. However, okay, however, Paul finds himself in, a, in an interesting situation that there's a hurry to it. They thought the time had been wasted. But what we find out is Paul, again, was not guided by the clock on in, in, the, in the ship. He was not guided by the rising and the setting of the sun. Paul was guided by the promise of God. He told him, listen, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be it's going to be tough out here. I like that. Paul saw the toughness coming. He said it's going to be disastrous and we're going to lose some ship and some cargo. He said and maybe our own lives, our own lives will be at stake. Um, and, and he says that it, and as he was about to give direction, somebody else stepped in uh, and, and tried to in, intercede Paul. Um, Paul, the centurion didn't listen to Paul. He followed the advice of the pilot and they decided to go on. So this is what I'm trying to say. Paul said, we need to stay here. We don't need to go. I know it looks tough, but we need to stay here for a little while. It's going to be, if we, if we go, it's going to be disastrous. Sometimes in our Christian ministry and our Christian walk and our Christian lives, we need to understand that being patient or still is not a problem. Sometimes and I got to plead guilty to this. As, as a pastor, sometimes I tried to get stuff and it wasn't in the right time. It was, and it, it, I had disastrous results. Can I be honest about that? In the past, I've learned to be patient with God. And we all learn that about our individual lives. Sometimes we try to do what God didn't tell us to do. And guess what happens? We end up stuck somewhere with disastrous results. I remember two stories. I'm going to tell you, when I was a little boy, I decided that I was going to take my, I had these training wheels on my, on my bike. And I told my dad to take him off of me. He said, no, nah, you need a little more time on the training wheels. Uh, it's just lines. So I, I I got my next door neighbor to take him off of me. He took my training wheels off. My dad was coming down the street. I was going to show him I could ride our training wheels. You know what I did? I ran right down the hill to hit a tree. It was disastrous. Why? Because I didn't wait till daddy got told me. what. In the same way in our Christian walls, we got to wait to daddy. Our father, God, is able to give us and, and instruct us and tell us when to go. Two weeks ago, I told my oldest son. And, he, you know, of course, kids get to be 23, they think they're grown. I said, hey, man, wait till tomorrow. I need to um, do something to the car. No, nah, Dad, I'll be good. I'll be good. You know what happened? He went on the highway, and this thing, you know, the car, the car, car went down. He called me, what should I do? I said, had you listened to me before you left Atlanta, 
we, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But you had to push out that. So, and I, I really did. I left him on his own for about 20 minutes. Then I called back and told him what to do. But I, I wanted to, God does the same thing in us. When God tells us to do something, sometimes we just got to wait. Can somebody say that? You got to wait. And you got to do what he says do there. It, 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 and, 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 and when it's time, guess what? God will take you. Y'all see where I'm going? He'll take you where you need to go. This is in your life. This is in your ministry life. This is in everything you do. Sometimes we can get, we can jump the gun and find ourselves going backwards instead of forward. I'm going to stop here for the, tonight, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to complete this tomorrow because this chapter, to be honest with you, chapter 27, in many ways is a perfect knot. It ties the perfect knot on the book of Acts. The book of Acts started off with the, 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 the presence of Jesus, the promise of the Holy Spirit, and the actions that came as a result of the Holy Spirit on obedient people. Now it is now narrowed down to the same thing, the presence of God, the power of, of the Holy Spirit, an obedient person, and most of all, the impact of God in the life of those who love him. And I want to close out tomorrow night, but I just want us to just kind of be sensitive in our lives, knowing full well that difficulties will come, but that God will prevail. I want us to be sensitive in our lives and on our journeys. We're going to run into some challenges, but understand that God will prevail. Understand that sometimes we're going to face crosswinds, but guess what? God will prevail. And understand sometimes we're going to want to go on, but God wants to slow us down. But guess what? God will prevail. I'm going to stop here tonight at 823, but I want everyone in here tonight to just be encouraged um, as you serve the Lord. Knowing that in serving the Lord, we already seen it right now. God will show you his grace. You want God, you want to see God's grace? Serve him and watch what happens next. God bless you tonight. Let us close out in prayer. Father God, it is in the name of Jesus that we come tonight, Lord, once and again, just to give your name the praise, to give your name the glory, and give your name the honor. We thank you tonight, Lord, for the opportunity you've given us to study your word. We thank you, Lord, tonight for the opportunity that you have given us. Uh, to to be have highlighted again, Lord, your movement in the lives of your people. And I pray, God, as we disconnect from these phone lines, as we disconnect tonight, Lord, from these um, from these um, th this this Zoom line, Lord, that you let us be connected to you by the power of your Holy Spirit and connected with to each other through love. I pray, God, that you bless every household, every family, and every individual Christian here tonight. I pray, God, that you let your word get in our hands and feet that we can serve you better. God, let, let your word get in our hearts that we, be, we may be strengthened in our inner person. God, let your word get in our on our lips and tongues and vocal cords. We may declare your word to a dying world, to each other and to ourselves. God, let your word get in our ears that we can hear your word over the winds and the waves of this world. And finally, Lord, let your word get on our minds and in our minds. We might have peace that surpasses our understanding and that the fiery darts of Satan be quenched. God, I pray this night, Lord, that you just grant us, Lord, all that we need to live in victory for you. God, please Build a head of protection around us. Protect us from the fiery darts of Satan. God, give us peace, joy, grace, mercy. Let us, Lord, then be able to do this, to pray without ceasing, to give you thanks in everything, and to rejoice evermore in you. Lord, don't let us ever quench your Holy Spirit, but let us be continuously filled with your Holy Spirit, empowered by your Holy Spirit, led and guided by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray, God, tonight for those who come to worship. We pray, God, you strengthen us, bless us, and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hold on, Zoom line. God bless your phone line. I'm now unmuted. God bless your phone line.